have costumers tag I'm gonna answer some questions and I'm also going to work on making a cross stitch fox for the pattern that I drew up and I'd like to put the little fox inside something like this that I can pin to some of my outfits I belong to the history bounders page and the fox is kind of our mascot I want to make something that I can wear I'm gonna be using silk thread black and then I have gold and foxy colors. I'll give, get white here in a minute. I will probably be using these longer quilting basting needles. I really like the basting needles. What's your channel name and what's the story behind it? My channel name is Eagle and Room, and it's pretty simple. My SCA device is the Eagle and the Room. When I started my YouTube channel, originally my thought was that I would mostly do SCA stuff, but it turned out that I have a lot of things that I want to do. Now focus on other things. It's not just exclusive to my love of the SCA. When and why did you start costuming? Well, I've been sewing since I was a young girl, and I used to make doll clothes, and I used to make clothing for myself. College, I got more involved in the SCA when I moved to the Kingdom of Artemisia or Montana. I love history. I truly love history and I was teaching full time and it was a really good hobby for me to do where I could go camping, I could focus on a time of history. I really dove into learning more about historical garb at that point. In 2011, I'm gonna have to up my game and I'm gonna have to learn more about how to put things together. <laughs> I mean, I've always read patterns and I've made things along the way. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a chronic artist is what I call it. Um, but up until that point, I had done more painting, more sculpture, more woodwork, more other kinds of crafts, beadwork, glass beads, lamp work, uh, all that kind of stuff. Kind of how that happened and it's just tumbled downhill since then. Uh, how did you get into making YouTube videos? Well, ironically, it's been a two-part process. The first part of the process is that I started making how-to videos on buttons and buttonholes and brooches and SCA type things. Then I wasn't making SCA costuming videos. I was making videos called daily devotions. As I'm doing more daily devotions, the more I realize I want to do videos that show more and more of the crafting side. That's what cascaded this process. I got a Patreon account in 2018. Um, I really started using it in 2019. I really started deciding that, you know, I create all the time. So why am I not sharing my chronic affliction with everyone else? That's kind of how that started. Um, what is your usual genre of costumes? I don't have one. I make everything from Roman. I actually have some Roman Dalmaticas that are on my to-do list this year. I've done Greek. I've done Italian, done Spanish, some German, not a lot, English, Welsh, and then modern, I've done Victorian, 
all the way up into modern dresses and pants. And I can't say I have a preferred genre. Whatever genre catches my eye and whatever it is that I'm interested in doing at the time. I'm never gonna be somebody you're gonna pin down and say, this defines Anchorette, A to B. <laughs> it's just not gonna work. Um, how many costumes have you made? How many days of the year are there? I do a lot. I don't think I could count. I make all the time. There, I don't have a, oh, I've made this many outfits this year and this is what I've accomplished. No square box, square peg and round hole. <laughs> it doesn't fit. <laughs> Uh, what was your first costume? Definition of costume is a set of clothes in a style typical of a particular country or historical period. I probably made my first costume in sixth grade or my sixth grade mentally from Anne McCaffrey's Dragon Song book. I was absolutely in love with her. Her character, the world, everything. Absolutely in love. Which costume is your favorite or biggest accomplishment? I like to think that I get better. IRCC costume from last year is probably the one I am currently the most proud of. I spent a lot of time on the IRCC dress with all the embroidery. There's more than 50 hours of embroidery on that gown. I've, I've taken it apart and put it back together now twice and I have a third time to go to fix some things. So, um, which of your costumes do you like the least? Back in 2010, I don't know what I was thinking. I took some cotton fabric and I dyed it black and I used crushed, synthetic crushed velvet, an old bedspread and I made trim and I made a brooch and a pillbox hat to go with it. And um, I made it all in the early period Welsh style of gown. The style of the gown is correct. The material is way off. It didn't die right. It's more like a gray. It's epically bad. <laughs> it's really, really bad. Uh, where is your favorite local place to go shopping for fabric or other costuming materials? I have biotoxin or toxic mold illness. I can't go shopping locally, but for fabric, needles, other kinds of things, I go online. I have a plethora of online stores and I'm constantly searching for deals, things that I can get on sale that I don't have to spend full price on. There really isn't anything locally that's not in a water damaged building. So uh, commercial patterns, self-drafted pa drafted patterns or winging it? Well, both. <laughs> I have a couple books, the books that have been my go-to books, and a lot of pictures, a lot of drafting, a lot of making mock-ups, seeing how they fit, making patterns. I use usually wrapping paper to make patterns because there's a grid on the back. It's a really go-to. I can iron the pattern out again. It's awesome. I do have patterns now. I've actually, in the last probably only in the last year or two, purchased patterns really. Purchased the Tudor Taylor pattern back a couple years ago. I had the books and I had sincerely drafted two complete dresses trying to get the one that fit correctly and I, I couldn't get the bodice to work. And, and I don't know if it's because of the biotoxin and I was really being affected by mind fog that year. I am so grateful I bought that pattern and it has worked out magnificently. I've used it several times to make several Tudor outfits. I don't regret the purchase of that pattern at all. I have purchased now recently some Victorian-esque type pattern. Uh, what are your favorite fabrics to work with and why? Linen is my favorite. Then wool, silk, cotton. I do have some poly fabric type things, but they are not my favorite. I use them when I have to, but it's definitely not my go-to fabric choice. Have you revamped any old costumes? If so, what did you do with them to give them new life? I do a lot of that, actually. I do a lot of, this doesn't fit anymore, or this doesn't work right, and I take things apart and I rework them. What part of the making a costume do you dread the most? Seam ripping. I hate it. What's your favorite part about creating a costume? The embellishments, the embroidery, the beadwork, anything that blings it up. I love that part. I also like taking pictures at the end. <laughs> uh, what is your favorite entertainment while you were working on something? Audible. <laughs> Audible is probably the number one go-to. And after Audible, Probably, I 
Netflix and Prime. How many hours per week do you work on making things? So I work a 40 hour a week job, Monday through Thursday. So I have Friday off and then I have my own business where I do health coaching, energy work, biofield tuning and remote healing. That takes up about another 10 to 15 hours depending on the week and the rest of it is crafting. <laughs> so how long does it usually take you to complete a costume? Depends on the costume. I don't have a set time. I don't set deadlines and I normally have three, four projects going at the same time. I have a list. This is the part where when I say I am an artist, that is what I what, need. Where is your favorite place to take photos in your costume? Outside, I live in Montana, it's everywhere, it's beautiful. Pick a place. Uh, what are your favorite colors to work with? Well, my device colors in the SCA are black, gold, and green. Those are my colors, but I love all color. Again, I'm an artist. I love jewel tones are my favorite, pastels are my least favorite. What's your next project? my list. <laughs> uh, what is your ultimate dream costume? I don't have one. For me, it's once I complete something that I really put a lot of love and attention into, something else has already been cooking in the pot. I don't have an ultimate dream project. Do you have any other hobbies? They're more significant than costuming. I tell people all the time, my one hobby is the SCA. Everything I do that I could possibly have a hobby in, the SCA can accommodate. All of the art things, which I do have a degree in art. So not only do I have a degree in art, but I am an artist. And I paint. I do all kinds of mixed media. It's everywhere. <laughs> my other hobby would be fencing. The other hobby would be dancing. I met my partner in country western dancing. It is probably one of the most physically, emotionally fulfilling activities. I love ballroom, country and western. The waltz is probably my favorite. Hiking. I love hiking. What is your favorite thing about CauseTube? I think what I am enjoying is that there is a community where before, I felt like I was really just kind of out there doing it on my own. And there were people like Kathy Hay and Enchanted Rose and last year Bernadette Banner really kind of took off. And I remember thinking, God, wouldn't it be amazing if we were all connected? I wanted to really meet those people. And that's probably one of my favorite things about the costuming community is I'm not, I, I was doing it, but I would do it intermittently because I felt so alone doing it and I'm really gratified to see that. And in only in the last couple of months, now there's a real community and I'm very grateful to that. Doing it all by yourself in the wilds of Montana, where my closest event is a minimum of two and a half hours away in any direction, can be quite discouraging. <laughs> Next year, 2021, will be my year to go to costume college. So it's already, I already have a a saving set up for it. I am prepping in that direction. <laughs> Which three cause tubers will you tag? Uh, try to tag someone you know personally, someone from a different country, and someone new to cause tube. I don't know. I'm working on that. I will have to post an update video on that, but pretty sure scraps and sequins because I know Marty. Um, maybe Jewel because she's in Denmark and I absolutely adore her videos. Being a part of a community has always been a dream. I am somebody who struggles with sensory processing. Big Comic Cons are not gonna be my thing. There's too many people. Really wanna go to Costume College. I really wanna go to Penzik. I really wanna go to these places. But the buildup to go to something like that is exhausting and the downside and the isolation that I have to have post an event like that is necessary to my well-being. Sensory processing is a, is a is a is a thing and anxiety that comes with that is a different kind of anxiety. It's difficult for me to talk about it because I have to be a hundred percent authentic about this because people get upset with me if I don't show up or I bail or I want to do something and then the anxiety creates the problem where I'm not able to follow through. I find that the costuming, costuming community, because it is online to start, we are all over the globe, we can still be a community without it being having to go to a coffee shop every Tuesday and show up and be face to face and deal with that exhaustion to feel like you belong. And I really seriously struggle with, I think everything's fine and then I go home and I worry 
does that person really like me? Did they say that? Did they mean that? I overthink things. It's, it's a big deal. I want to thank each and every one of you for your patience and your understanding and the welcomeness that everybody has brought to this platform and acceptance of each and every one of our quirks and idiosyncrasies because it is what makes us beautiful human beings and it is what helps us support one another. But know that we all have our individual idiosyncrasies that make us unique and make us fabulous artists and costumers. Uh, and I will show a picture of what I'm working on when I get done at the end of this so that you can see what I did. Have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.